Pull it to me, to me. Yeah, well, let's go. Oh, have a go, go. Oh, up. Have a go, have a go. Come on, Ty. 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 Good afternoon everybody and welcome to a sun-drenched St George's Park now for the final chapter in this International Rugby Sevens weekend. It has been a weekend of much discussion and we're going to continue that discussion before we get into these final two games because we have got the esteemed selection of Mr Rob Vickerman and I'm sure you will have your own ideas on this but this is what Rob's 13 has looked like for the men's GB squad. Here's his list, right. I felt like that needed a drum roll, Wardy. You did? Okay. Can't afford the drum, but use my fingers. Right. Talk us through the toughest calls you've got here. Oh, happy to. The big deliberations around this have been actually quite joyous, haven't they? Like I say, I want this to be a conversation. The only caveat is, if you disagree with me, not a problem, but you have to select an alternative. So you can't just say so-and-so should be in. You have to also remove that person that you think it would replace. So be aware of the positions as well. Yeah, maybe. absolutely, which I've tried to help out a little bit, and I understand that this could be quite confusing perhaps to people looking on. But as you can see, the game of sevens, you need to have versatility, not only in terms of your tactics, but also in terms of your positional skills, about being able to play in different places. So, for example, Dan Bibby, he can play at fly half. He can also cover centre, which is the C. Someone like Tom Bowen, for example, he is really... Uh, adaptable in terms of being able to play prop hooker wing or centre which is why you've seen so many selections so in terms of this there is a bit of a split that seven people within these 13 can play in the forwards and I think this is a very very well balanced team that is very quick highly skilled and it suits the way that they want to try and establish their identity now this is a team that have only been together or will have been for four months come the Olympic Games so that needs to be very quickly established and clearly if people know their sevens and see these names they are not the biggest so their game has to be around high pace very high accuracy of skill sets and keeping that ball alive not looking for those collisions as you sometimes get when you play the likes of New Zealand Samoa um, some of the more physical teams Fiji in particular so this I believe is a really well blended team and um, people will obviously pick this apart and say well notable omissions who's not there who is there what nations are represented but I've absolutely ignored that I've not gone into nationalities whatsoever I believe these are the 13 best players with one asterisk around Ethan Walton who is not playing in this Red Bull International Sevens tournament yeah, that's the, that's the obvious standout name. Are there any names in there? Let's say, I mean, I know Ethan Waddleton's coming back from injury. Let's hope he's fit, of course. If he doesn't make it, have you got a standby in for him? Yeah, I actually think there's a few in there. In terms of what you want from a sevens game, you want people that can try and steal that ball back. So your ruggedness around the breakdown, your, your dominance of collision, and be a bit gnarly if you like, your classic open side in the game of 15s. Ethan Waddleton fits that bill perfectly specifically with no Phil Burgess who is a huge loss but understandably wants to be with his family um, going forward which is you know, fine the replacement for Waddleton would be someone of the likes of Farndale who might not be as good over the ball as Waddleton but he's, he's versatile he's fast he's powerful and similarly Procure would be in that in that mould of which we're going to see in this upcoming game so they're the players who know that you know they're in or thereabouts but it's about making sure the coaches realize it they recognize it and time as we've said all of these last three days Wardy it's limited so you need to be at your best consistently when you're on the field be it training or playing we know the potency of the likes of Mitchell Norton Glover as well we've seen McFarland as well but Rich de Carpentier is going to be absolutely vital to this GB outfit isn't he if you look across with all the positional skills he's the only one with a single entity next to his name because he is an out and out impact forward now the makeup of sevens forwards tends to be you have your brute who often is a forward in, in 15s as well and conversely your, your opposing prop in that situation might well be a center or a winger that could be very adaptable been good with ball in hand as well so the carpentry are different but needed certainly when you look at the likes of the talent on the series well i'm sure you'll all have your thoughts on that and let us know what you're thinking let's now take a look at the women's selection from mr vickerman this in many ways has got just as many ifs and maybes 
what do you think what's your thinking there Rob yeah again really interesting to get a debate on this so as with the men's remit if you think it needs to be contested or challenged then that's great let's have that conversation but you've got to suggest who is the like for like so this team I believe is more about a power game now when you look at the World 7 Series for the women specifically New Zealand are almost at a different level because of their skill set but also their power so you need some really big personalities and presence on the field to try and to counter that hence why there's a little bit more of a lean towards those dominant players who are really going to take people on your Abby Burtons your Heather Fishers Lisa Thompson's gone really well and Alex Matthew in particular people are going to get stuck in um, conversely other side I think there is more of depth of talent in terms of pace than a GB team has ever had specifically looking at the likes of Jazz Joyce who's been electric um, Meg Jones she's the step in the middle but Rona Lloyd point of difference the last three days we've seen what she can do which if you look at England or Wales or Scotland when they do seldom play on any type of sevens event you don't see that often and this has got pace across the board in the back line combine that with the power I think this is a really exciting team and we're talking metal hope with that possibility as well captaincy is something that is often flagged for different teams the importance of and I know you have very uh, stringent views on on the captain now for the men I would suggest it's going to be fairly obvious who is going to be that and that'll be Tom Mitchell once again who would you pick out of that women's selection to lead the team it's really interesting isn't it when you have this conversation because we as the media as the broadcasters as the wider public we always put so much emphasis on that little tiny C next to a name and actually I've had experience for countless years it's that whole squad effort that you need different leaders amongst it the standouts here are the likes of Abby Brown, who's you know, successfully captained England team. But I also like the look of Meg Jones, not only because she's very vocal, and you probably hear her bleed through the microphone often, but that presence, that personality. Sometimes you want those high-energy people, the ones that really galvanise, to be the lieutenant and not necessarily be the captain, to remove that yeah. pressure away from them. You see that a lot with cricket often. Um, so I think there's got a real strong selection of people to do it, but I would also probably look at Abby Brown just for that more calm presence I, I really like how she's gone she's got the experience of going to Rio she's been talented these last three days really standing out in terms of performance so the first job of leadership in any guys Wardy is to get picked first and yeah, I think she, sure. she does yeah yeah and uh, certainly Abby Brown's performances over these three days have been constantly high when she's particularly when she started and and she's a 14 minute player she, she always seems to last the, the whole distance. So in terms of the way that you're organising your team, Meg Jones, Abby Brown, Meg has been another one that seems to have that 14 minutes in her legs. I don't think you're going to get away from this, Water. You've watched every single minute of this tournament. Who do you think has been the standout? Who would you have perhaps in there and who would you replace? Well, there are two Scottish women that have been my standouts in that group and that's Rona Lloyd and Lisa Thompson. I think Lisa Thompson, having got her name wrong in that first match with those two tries, has, has I've kept my eye on her perhaps a bit more than I would have done, but she really has provided something different. Uh, and I think Rona Lloyd, as you've already stressed, Vix, has got that capacity to open up defences. Yeah, uh, we haven't seen Amy Wilson Hardy because of, she's had a problem with her leg. That She could come into the reckoning much as Ethan Middleton could with the men. But I think those two Scottish ladies are really shown, and Jazz Joyce, well, nothing new. We didn't, nothing that we haven't known before. Yeah, she uh, looked great, didn't she? But there's some, there's some X factor there. Yeah, yeah. And Mo Hunt, I think probably honourable mention, coming in late to the party. Um, her experience would be vast. The presence as a person around the squad would be good, but unfortunately, not on this shortlist. Well, very interesting topic of discussion of course thanks Rob for that and uh, as I say I'm sure you have got your thoughts on that let's take a look at this game coming up now the last game in the men's tournament with the USA Eagles desperate to get a tick in the win box that has at the moment got out in it up against the hosts GB who had that 100% record until the Irish took it from them this morning Here's their lineup for this last game. Tom Bowen Coombs, Tom Emery gets a run out. Paddy Kelly in there, Ross McCann in there. Tom Mitchell back in to organise things and Morgan Williams to provide the pace, the strike threat out wide. Plenty of impact off that bench as well, should it be required. Tony Rock obviously looking for some other answers to questions that he may have had through this weekend to see what those men can provide in this last outing this weekend. Mike Friday. Well, 
to see the uh, GB team making sure they got that sun factor of 20 on for this final game. Mike Friday has picked a starting seven that looks fairly familiar. Colin Isles getting the start. We haven't seen an awful lot of him this weekend. Joe Schroeder we certainly have. Yosefo and Hughes, familiar names there. So they will be on the hunt to try and get their game into gear. And really it is gears that have missed out in the majority of those five previous games for the USA. And my goodness me, it's going to be a long eight, nine hour flight back if they've got 0 from 6. It certainly will be. You heard from Madison Hughes this morning in the last session about his frustrations. And they were calling each other out on it. You need that. You need that awkward conversation to be able to try and improve performance. This is a highest level of rugby these players aspire to get to. And it's all gearing towards that Olympic trip. And there'll be a lot of players watching in the United States. I know they've got a real growing following that love their rugby. They want, more, they want to see more from their players. They want to know why it's not been happening and see those corrections been put into place. Yes, it's a good morning to those of you across the pond. If you're watching, you'll be pleased to know that you have moved the sun over this far at last. We've had some washing machine weather through the course of this morning, but it looks like we're going to be bathed in the yellow stuff for the rest of this one. And certainly for this match, it's a, a match-up that, well, obviously the GB have really dominated thus far. 33-12 on day one, five tries to two on in that one. 24-14 yesterday, four tries to two on that one. And it has been scoring tries that's been the problem for the USA. They're running just eight tries this weekend. But then you look at the D on the flip side of the coin, 133 points. If you average over 26 points a game to the opposition, you are making life difficult for yourself. Yeah, really difficult. And Mike Friday was the man that came up with the old Magic 21 number. Certainly been coached under him in the England setup. Was always talking about getting to that point of difference to really securing a game. But this USA team lacking confidence. You can even see a little bit of that. They're normally bounding around the place. You very rarely see Carl Niles on the left of the middle of the screen standing still. Um, but hopefully he knows he's got a chance to impress. He also knows a lot of people will be watching around the world, which is always brilliant to champion, either live or on catch-up on the YouTube channel. So big points to prove for all of these US guys. Well, everybody just stepping out now. Perhaps a, a good opportunity to say a big, big thank you to everybody that has made this tournament happen from our cameraman and director to the staff at the RFU to all the logistical people because of course traveling at the moment is not the easiest of things to make this tournament happen and make it happen so quickly big big thank yous to those guys and I know the players really appreciate the efforts that have gone on that they can step out here this weekend yeah here here to that Wardy it's difficult enough to get your kids to school yet alone host international <laughs> seventh tournament so well done everyone <laughs> The Vickerman kids have had such a good weekend. Because I've not been there. Exactly. Craig Evans going to ref this one. Tom Mitchell just confirming the setup on this right hand side. Evans checks we're seven aside and off we jolly well go. Schroeder. up. Leaps high but doesn't take it. The ricochet works for the USA though. Just exploring opportunities down that left flank and you get the feeling the Eagles just need to string a few phases together to get that cohesion working. Look at Schroeder striding out. That's good see. The vision is there from the big forward. The little offload is there. Hughes. Isles steps in. Isles going down the short side. Too many down there. Surely, Carlin. Even for you. Hughes decides to open things up. Schroeder hanging out wider. Fualo. And it goes to Leuta. Coombs coming across and gets the tackle in. Ball has just gone forward so it's going to be a put in to the USA but that's a that's a more promising start from the Eagles it certainly is they're playing angry which is what they need to do so you only have to look at these shots to know the point of difference is size and the biggest two in shot there with Luther and Joe Schroeder just taking a knee for a minute but this is when they play at their best they're 
usual tactic of Mike Friday trying to play with good passing skills and getting them wide. Great tackle from Coombs to chop down the big man. But good support from Schroeder. And now, this is what you want. So secure this scrum ball, a Sefo behind the scrum, and the world's fastest rugby player only needs millimetres out wide to get over the line. Hughes struggling to just wade through those tackles here. Schroeder wants to go quickly. Double ganged by GB, but ball still there for the US. Iota rolls. I think he's just been cuddled too strongly there to get that ball down. Oh, what great defence again. It's all very well been over the line, but the ball's got to be down. And I tell you what, the five GB shirts in shot here. Why they didn't go left to acres of space, I'm not quite sure. But even so, the big man gets over the line, but Liuta cannot get it down. Matthew Brown looks like he's uh, struggling at the moment. He's got that right leg severely taped. There he is with the 13 on his back. So you've got to wonder, look, so many people around him. The game of sevens, don't forget, you've got more than half your team committed to that one. And Brown is hobbling back, you're right. Sefo and Hughes, good defence from Emery. Had to take his man down and make sure that there was no quick release at the same time. There is Brown. Seems to have recovered, even with Ross McCann on his back. Puala gets the call from Yosefu. GB well aware that you give Martin Yosefu the chance to really rev that engine. He's so difficult to bring down. Hughes changes the attack. Schroeder. Schroeder gets through one. Almost, but not quite for the Eagles. Now can they move it out? They don't need to, do they? No, they don't. Because Matai Leute gets the score on the board. Well, that's a big collision over the line as well. He thought, as he did previously, Coombs might try and target the ball and hold him up. But it's just big men running hard, isn't it? Hughes trying to probe, get it inside. There's the offload. Schroeder goes hard, gets close. And so many GB players in and around the ball. Again, five players you're seeing in shot. There's a whole world of space out wide but there Liuta going over you just want a bit more balance there Coombs target that ball try and grab it and that's where the defensive skills can go to next level accepting the fact you're going to lose a collision but just securing that ball he goes in hard and it's a hell of a ricochet ball down there ultimately job done Hughes make sure it's the maximum job done so USA with a little bit of confidence surging through their veins now after that first portion of the game. But this GB team for the most part is very experienced. Morgan Williams to halfway. Mitchell and Emery. Emery, Emery turns on the afterburners, Emery's gone. Isles thinks about it but knows that there's too much speed and distance now from young Emery when he may not have made the Vickerman selection but he's showing what he's about in these first five minutes today. Now this guy's on a 45 degree flight path for his projection of how his performance has improved. He was a real tough one when I looked at the overall contribution clearly around some great players as well but he actually spots that it showed in front of him two or three seconds before he receives the ball. And that little bit of footwork buys him time to square up Big Joe, gets on the outside, and the afterburner just all too much for the big man in the middle to try and stop Emery. As I consistently say, wherever he plays, just so gifted. I just wish he knew how good he is. Such a good player, be it sevens, tens, or fifteens. So, school's tied up. Work our way towards the end of this first half. Who's going to have the final say? Fall out. Just trying to tease and tempt Coombs to step out, but he wasn't having any of it. So, we say we'll have to work back towards this near side, or will they? That little inside pop, lovely to Hughes. Madison Hughes! Oh, stretches out to evade the clutches of Emery. And the skipper does what his team needs at the right time. 
Well, worth catching after this game, the words that Madison Hughes was saying before the interview. Not good enough, not acceptable. Let's get asking some questions and make some changes. And this is what he does. The line he runs back at the ball was the best thing about that. He knew the ball was going to be held up. And because he ran at that inside shoulder of Coombs, couldn't get there. And that's a great fend on Emery, who was catching him every single step he was taking. An exemplary yep. kicking as well from Matty Hughes. Here's the angle, back at the ball, and then you'll see the arrow line. That is a sweet line. Coombs interested in the second man tackle, which meant that nobody was stopping Hughes. Two conversions to add to that try for the USA skip. Emery picks up the rebound, standing in front. Is the half-time hooter, but the USA will just be looking to compound this advantage if they possibly can. Hughes looking to set up a line-out inside the GB22. Yeah, I spoke with him earlier about the, the kicking tactics, considering in the first couple of days always looking to take scrums off penalties, but this time going for that line-out. He did flag that they're not the most confident at line-out, so it'll be interesting to see how they react to this. But in Schroeder, who's about four inches taller than any GB player, you'd think he'd throw him up well enough in this situation. Schroeder, unaffected by any GB jumpers, and it's Leuta, almost but not quite, still there for the USA. Hughes looking for a one-two. Wrapped up though by Paddy Kelly. Important tackle from the Scott. This time Hughes finds the way through and it is a double from the USA skipper right at the end of this first half that at last, at last, gives them some security on the scoreboard. Very much a 15s feel about the way the US are playing this game. Those lines back at the ball, the short line off the scrum off, but it's working. I think Carl Niles might be getting a bit bored out wide to be honest, but effective for Madison Hughes once again running a good line. Schroeder. Well, Hughes has waited until the last match of this weekend to get on the try scoring board. He's been kicking points in conversions, and that is a very important 14, well, 16 points from Madison Hughes in this first half. And that will buoy the USA side. No. No doubt about that. Great Britain in their huddle now, just wondering what they need to do to get themselves, get a foothold into this game. Apart from that Emery try, they've hardly been into the opposition 22. The way that this table is set up, GB have to win or draw to win this tournament. Yes, it's not the be all and end all, I get that. But that will be a target. If the USA should win their first game of the weekend, then it's Ireland who will be celebrating on their way to the airport now. And in the psychology of the coaches making these selections, you're talking about a winning performance and a losing one. And here's how you do win a game. Wonderful footwork, Emery, ball in two hands. That indecision from the defenders, Acefo and Schroeder split through the middle. As the accent glides through, Cobb have got a hell of a signing with Tom Emery. And here we see Madison Hughes coming to the force. FO carrying. Short little ball. Wonderful line. Madison Hughes gets the fen ready. And off we go. Not the biggest legs, but they're certainly powerful ones. And then on the back of this effort, he also gets one nearer the line by running a wonderful line off Schroeder. The big guy picks, just takes that little step and a half. And because Hughes has gone back at the ball once again, wonderful line of running from Madison Hughes. Hughes and Mitchell may have a slightly different skill set, but they still both have that innate instinct in sevens don't they to be in the right place to make the right moves yeah they're the wizards Woody they're the ones that control the strings but at the moment what we're seeing is Madison living by the words he was saying not good enough need to improve let's make a change Schroeder with the big bat back and there is the captain with the ball in hand little change of strategy to kick it through Coombs having to react quickly to stop that flow Inside their 22. Yeah, Williams into the mix for the Eagles. Hold 
A boot to ball. Foot race. Carlin, what have you got? Tom Bowen's behind you. Oh, I love it. Well, Bowen wasn't going to be stopped there, was he? Yeah, look at the celebration there. Oh, quick take. It was four on one. Taken back. Referee rightly says take it from the mark. Kelly, step, go, and gone. In fact, that's Morgan Williams, I beg his pardon, as a wingman should be. Making the most of the opportunity, Williams. Well, it's under his tactic. We haven't seen GB do much of this at all, playing almost barbarians, not daring to kick it. But this is the net result of it. You end up 60 metres further down from where you were. And you can see behind that tent a wonderful sidestep from Morgan Williams. Here we go. The big jump step, left foot down, Schroeder nowhere near him, wonderful change of pace. Haven't seen him at all enough for my liking. When you see him playing for Wales in the series, he really stands out, but not had much ball in hand to see him do his wonderful skill set in Burton, sadly. Yeah, the tall North Walian showing what he's about there with that score. Well, that throws this game back into the mix. Plenty of time, of course, on the clock. Mitchell taking the wrong club out of the bag for that restart. He'd be frustrated with that one, Tom Mitchell. The unforced error, the serving of the ball into the net. Kicking the ball straight out now. A scrum. As I said before, this is something that they've been working on. Hopefully a little bit more successfully than they have for the last two days. But you've got to scrum off, put the ball in. Red scrum at Kevin Williams very, very fast. And hopefully he can create a chance to stay on his feet. To Boiler in behind at five half. It's up for him to choose which way. GB very tight in their defensive set. Peeling to the left. GB reacting quickly to just stem that one, but it's still there. Wheeler. Schroeder. Ayutza. Cut back from yourself, oh, but GB saw him coming. Still going in midfield. Bouncing off Emery. say trying to rev things up noticeably quickly or quicker I should say than we've seen in some of the previous matches Williams start to step Schroeder and the ricochet works for the USA and the offload is there and big Joe Schroeder is going to go over for his first try of the weekend and not only that Tom Mitchell takes two minutes for his troubles throwing the hand in the air to try and slap the ball it's good officiating actually because sometimes an advantage gets played you forget about that but that was about Marty starting the party you got 15, okay? the big bump there we go out the way Emery got to do better than that yeah, many people have been sat down by Acefo and he's got his name on the list lovely footwork again Schroeder has been the hardest worker for this USA team always popping up stays floating around you can't miss him look at the mullet and then manages to somehow score without tripping over the back of it to whack <laughs> oh, it down in front of the camera. That's harsh. That is harsh. Great work, Joe Schroeder. Great work, Caven Williams as well. Well, is that going to put enough wind in the USA sails to take them to victory before they're taken to the airport? Six men for GB still, don't forget that. Yep. Mitchell watches on as the USA come again. Carlin Isles, acrobatic take out in the right wing. Nowhere to go. Williams, a quick transfer, looking for that gap where Mitchell would have been. The offload is there. Wheeler bouncing into the tackle and over for the try. It's a 1 2 hit from the Eagles. And GB feeling like they're on the ropes right now. Oh, that is some carry from Wheeler. Life University. Grad smashing it up against Team GB here. And what I like about it, it goes back against the ball. So he gets the ball pretty much one-on-one -on -one with know, Bowen, who's buying his time. But just check out his line back at the defender. Uses the ball as a bit of a cushion against him. And because of that momentum, manages to twist right, fall over, and get over the line. Now that makes it much more of a difficult proposition for this GB team. Still six men, but still a minute and a half. Couple of quick scores. 
and it'll be tentative time for this USA team. Mitchell may have returned a little too early and a little too eagerly, has he? Yeah. <laughs> so GB still down to six. And down 17 points now. Coombs off the head, sir. Now Mitchell comes back on with it all to do for his team if they're going to take and get themselves back into this game. Oh, USA in front of the kick. And that's the type of snapshot they need, although I'm not quite sure why they're taking so long. Team GB need to be seriously increasing the speed of this game. Get the try, get the conversion and get going again. Williams to Mitchell. Number eight. Mitchell throwing it longer and out to Paddy Kelly. Footballing skills not good enough under pressure there, and it was under pressure from Leuta. Took out Nigel Redmond there. On the, on the Many people have said that. <laughs> Many people probably wanted to oh, when yeah. he was playing. Yeah, oh yeah. Not as hard now, isn't he? He's not as good. Watching on from the sideline with Conor O'Shea from the uh, IQ, just looking to see how things are progressing. But that's where moments can really be shown to be. A little bit of inexperience from GB there. They need that quick transition, quick score to give them chance and they've lost that opportunity now. Isdale with a little offload to Tuparola. There goes the full-time hooter. So this is a play to nothing for Kayvon Williams. Mitchell escorting him down that right-hand side, getting the tackling, good work from Mitchell, but going over the top. Oh, Wheeler wasn't going to be stopped there, was he? Neither was Kevin Williams. Williams with the finish. And at last, the USA can celebrate a win in this weekend's contest. And I like the way they've gone about this game, What A really attritional play defined by Harley Wheeler. He is such an aggressive little player. Not the biggest guy, but my word, he packs a punch. Every single impressive carry of a rugby ball just doesn't give up, and he's one of those. Really flies in, uses the ball again as a bit of a weapon against Mitchell, bounces him off, gets the offload free. And that is a much better statement from USA. Well, smiles on the faces of the USA players at last. They've had to wait a long time, but they've come up with a performance that will no doubt please their fans watching back at home. A big performance as well, 36-14 over the hosts. It means that the winners of this weekend's men's tournament are Ireland. But, uh, yeah, a really good way to finish from the Eagles' perspective. I'm not sure what that says to GB and their coaches, but lots of different questions, lots of different answers found out, I guess, this afternoon. And the points difference really separating the two teams there. Ireland, for me, as I keep saying, on this exponential growth as a team and as a group of people and as a program. There'll be a lot of people who need to make more noise about this because come next month when they're in Monaco, Ireland could well be playing for a genuine shot to be Olympians. And that is a wonderful thing to be able to say. You can see across the three days of action, the Irish team initially falling dead to the GB but then got back on the horse and went really well certainly against USA standout performances 34-14 first game second day and then following that up first game day three 33 nil and critically the USA reversing that trend as we mentioned earlier about attack and defense scoring half a dozen tries in that last game only letting the GB over for a couple and uh, Mike Friday will have plenty to work on, no doubt about that, but he has got a tick in the win box at last. So, we move into the women's competition. The table may have already been decided with France the victors, but this nevertheless is always a tasty encounter. Let's take a look at the GB starting seven for this one. Abby Brown once again in the mix. Deborah Fleming gets to start for this one. Jazz Joyce is there as well. Eleanor Rowland, Hannah Smith, who's had an impressive weekend. Meg Jones, likewise. So that's Scott Forrest 
selection to start. David Cortex, what has he picked? Well, plenty of familiar names in there. See your funny always jumps out at you. The number two has been in fine try scoring form. Fanny Orta, the experience as well. Likewise, Carla Neeson. And Caroline Drouin. Yolanda Yengo, one of the youngsters really finding her feet in this at this level of sport. There is Fanny Orta, a veteran, I think, without giving away her age. She's been there, seen it. And uh, such an experienced operator. Abby Brown with the take. Rising height, sailing height. It's a poor pass from Roland, but it's uh, salvaged by Alex Matthews. Jones out to Joyce. Seems like a country and western outfit. Incidentally, Jess Joyce does like country music, I'm told. Or so she told me this morning. Anna Smith goes a wandering to try and investigate that French defence. McJones. Bit of a stumble and then straight into Akemba. Roland makes a nice break. Has she got support? Does she need it? Away goes Helena Roland. And she outstrips all the French defenders to get the first score on the board. Well, that was some distance for Helena Rowland, but she was up to it. Well, wasn't she just? The French defensive effort is all about their line speed. They try and blitz, which means they really close down the space in front. But you don't expect an international fly half to be on the receiving end of it because she goes at that 45 degree angle. And because of the nature of that line speed, splits the defenders and has then got the wheels to back it up. She goes all the way and there's some serious pace coming after her. Erin's been going really well this tournament when she's in freelance space. And Juan also got some pace to, to try and claw her back, but no one got anywhere near her. Fine conversion of her own try as well. Helena Rowland, one of the 13 players in this group that will be available to participate in the Allianz Premier 15 semi-finals next weekend so uh, it ain't going to stop for a lot of these girls plenty to play for Hounded on the ball by their counterparts. Can you get the call there? That's when they make you move 30 centimetres. Not a pet hate much. Honestly, I don't go on about it too much. But it slows it all down, but now again, a little bit of pace back in it. The one thing to look for this French team, offloading lines. They are so good at supporting the ball. To build up some momentum around the breakdown. Now it's whisked out. Drought throws a long hopeful one to Akemba. Akemba against Deborah Fleming will be one of those mini battles within the war that will be worth watching. France really built up some momentum. In many ways, it was a surprise that they lost to Ireland yesterday to lose their 100% record. But came back with some force this morning. It's a fantastic test for these GB women to try and consistently defend against such threats against them here. The French, see with her footwork, looking really sharp. Passing not quite as accurate as it should be. Two dip passes and it just stops your momentum as an attacker. Meg Jones a little bit in the middle of nowhere, but still there trying to get those dominant hits in because that's what Seven's defence is all about. Hannah Smith goes round the outside. Get back up to that French 22. Abby Brown has to take high above her head. Matthews forced to go back from halfway, but Deborah Fleming might have a bit of opportunity. Quickly surrounded by two French defenders. Brown reverses when she sees that it's going to be a cul-de-sac going down that particular route. Meg Jones, Smith. 
Joyce steps one. Can't step the second. Hollywood. Whistle and Jazz Joyce is gone. Talking about Hollywood. Well, Jazz Joyce is up there. Well, I know she'd be your leading lady, Wardy, but she's been brilliant this tournament. It's just that work rate, isn't it? Whenever she's in and around the ball, just buzzing after it, constantly looking for that chance to get that line break and get herself into space. The quick tap, ball on the floor, absolutely right. Doesn't need to pick it up. As long as it goes across the mark, off she goes. And as we've seen consistently, just too quick. It's like Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Roland again with a successful conversion. Talking to Jazz Joyce this morning, we were talking about Rio. Of course, she's one of the four girls that was out there and how much of a driver that is for them this time round. And fourth place is the worst finish always, isn't it? Oh, it totally wasn't out there. They just had that little bit of a dip in performance at a time that was so crucial. It's about consistency across the whole game. And as I say, they're looking really good against a strong French outfit here. Trying to get something moving and stitched together, really, in their attacking play. And again, just giving away the penalty at the breakdown. And once again, it's a sense of deja vu. GB back on the French 22 with options left and right. Roland. Smith. Smith! Oh, that's a terrific try from Hannah Smith. Might have winded herself on the dive there a bit, but that was really good probing play in the middle. Really comfortable in that middle third. They've got two or three of them, the playmakers, that are finding themselves hands on ball in the middle, pulling the strings. Meg Jones being one of them. Rolling the bounce back and almost like a bit of Harlem Globetrotters. Three changes direction. And it, net gain is that line break. Thank you. Well, Anna Smith, one of the many that's had to give up a lot in order to follow this quest for a an Olympic place qualified vet has and works in Edinburgh and now has had to give things up I think for a year in order to see if she can make the grade in order to get to Tokyo there's plenty of stories are similar to some of these girls who are really having to put their all into this journey Anna Smith, we're having just scored the try. She turns from Hero de Villain. It's a yellow card, which will give France the opportunity, maybe. Just a high shot, you can see as the defence was getting set. She goes across the shoulder. Always going to be dangerous. Kemba Fleming tracks her prey. Meg Jones really doesn't want to stop now. There may be a player down, but it doesn't matter. Jazz Joyce has a look, cuts back inside, so elusive. Gets the offload. Jones has options out to Deborah Fleming, and Fleming is gone. Well, it has been one way traffic in this first half from the GB ladies. Even with the player down, they can still make the space and still find that cutting edge. Jazz Joyce beating people for fun on this. Far hand side and then Meg Jones with a wonderful left hand pass gets it in the middle from Matthews and there the bridge pass over the defender. And clear running. Well just the kick to come in this first half. A half that has belonged to the hosts. Eleanor Rowland slotted all three so far but this by far the most difficult Oh, off the crossbar, as you might expect at a football ground. But what a great half that's been from the GB women. Even with Hannah Smith watching on from the sidelines at the moment. That scoreline, pretty emphatic and dominant. And a point of difference for this GB women's team is about that power, that physicality and breakdown skill. That, for me, is where this half have been won so emphatically. The French have already claimed the title of this tournament, but... The way that GB have got stuck in, rolling with a wonderful individual skill and score. 
but the collective effort, the size and the power, I believe, really is Thanks. making a difference in this game. The breakdown skills, Matthews coming to a four, specifically getting the ball, because once you've got it, look at the array of talent. Roland, Joyce, Jones, Smith, all so happy, ball in hand. Yeah. And it's a wonderful combination. That's when your size yeah. and your speed can work really well together. Yes, it has been a flow of tries four in all including that one from Jazz Joyce that has really well smacked France in the face in many ways they look a little bit stunned right now there's the Scottish centre going over before she went over the touchline just for a couple of minutes breather later on And that's the interplay that's so hard to play against. Even like football, that constant change of direction, that threat in the middle, you have to commit so many people to it. And the gaps are plenty. But this is what I like. A bit more physicality, a little bit of a high shot by. There's two minutes to Simbin for that one. Hannah Smith. And the final try of the half. Matthews to Jones and then look at this left hander over the top Fleming flying so what are France going to do in this second half can they change the dynamics of this match Neeson back to Siofani Cover tackle, my goodness me, she doesn't stop the sheep. Yingo. Jimmy working very hard to get across. Some of these French girls, particularly the forwards, very athletic and have deceiving speed in many ways the way they eat up the ground Hannah Smith now back on so GB back to seven seven foot long legs Wardy that's what it is when they get going you see Afani Akemba spectacular athletes as you say very adapted at rugby but you feel they'll be just as impressive on a track Hollywood just trying to uh, establish some security in the scrum. So we get the ball going again. Get it in, Play it, play it, gets the short pop off ball to Hannah Smith. Just changing the angles, just changing the variety of attack. Brown. Matthews. Matthews does such a lot of the, I won't say the dirty bits and bobs, but she does the short, hard push, the cleaning up calls, the bits and pieces play that is critical. The graft. Yeah, the graft. Yeah. You and Northern would know that. The way. doggedness, yes. Well, that was a big collision. Quick take and off they go. Akemba whisks it out. Takes the ball back and Akemba's going to stride over. Well, that was well worked. Very quick reaction. And France have had to wait for the best part of 10 minutes of this game to get on the scoreboard, but they've done it now. Will that change the flow of the game? We shall wait and see. A matter of time before their big power runners got into the game, wasn't it? Nice line. As soon as the defender steps in, the gap opens up. Fortunate for Smith because when the defender steps in, it's not really your fault. But there's the gap. Kemba took it. Some changes being organised by the GB side. Draw out with the restart. Abby Brown can't take clean. Nelson. 
Got number. Oh, into the fray. Oh, the you see, looks like Hannah Smith has uh, yes. taken a knock. Uh, this blood, it's gone. Nelson gone for Matthews Can into those forwards. Just looking to see what the problem Hannah on, Smith guys. has. Fight off, don't worry. I imagine you could probably self-diagnose yeah. a bit of that. <laughs> Very clever. Looks like it is a blood injury. Yeah. And the hairline. The three dogs at home will be worried about their owner and her state. There's a bit of a head on head when they came in. Diana. There's the head on head. Oh, was with one yeah. of her own teammates as well. Yeah. So all that happened. It tends to be one of those really unfortunate yeah. things. The top of your head it can reasonably split quite easily. So she's going to put a bit of ice on the head. Maybe need a stitch or two. Chloe Rolly on into the mix. That will force a change for Helena Rowland, I think. Yes. Okay. Stepping out into midfield. That's the flexibility that we were talking about with your selection to make sure you can have playing at least two, if not more, positions at so important in a 13-player squad. Batted on by Neeson. Again, another big collision on the floor. She's so tentative with those types of shots now, knowing how much pressure is on this timeline of their massive journey they're on. In the Mission Possible series, every single comment about how massive this moment is, the magnitude of this journey that they're on and program that they're in. You just don't want to see any injuries. Pell and Conde into the forward mix now for France. Emma Uren struggles to get outside. See you funny. Wilson. Abby Brown everywhere she turns. She sees white shirts, so she turns forward and she's off. Shannon is up. Tracks her back though, does well to bring her down. GB back on the front foot. Nelson not throwing the 50-50 pass, but just holding on a little bit too long for the referee's satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been a consistent theme. The players are going to have to adapt to these breakdown decisions so pivotal in sevens and so clear to see for the referees. Discipline, a massive part of any game of rugby. So funny, loses the ball in the contact. Referee was going to allow play to continue there, but referee in good position and sees the ball flip forward. Is that an out rip out? Meg Jones doesn't have to be the biggest, but she's a very smart defender. If someone's going to carry with the ball leading towards you, you're absolutely right in trying to rip it out. Her middle name is Tenacious. She certainly adds something very special into any midfield. See if she's in the Wasps midfield for this next weekend in the, one of those semi finals, the one at the stoop. I was laughing the other day because she reminds me a bit of Rocco, the social media sensation, the little lad. <laughs> she's so enthusiastic when yeah. she bounces yeah. around everywhere. Yeah. She is that rubber ball, isn't she? Talking of which, here's Chloe Rolly. Maybe against her next Saturday. Jones changes the options. Gets into forward gear. How's the bounce going to work? Beautifully for Meg Jones. Gets the offload and Roland's over for another. Well, Roland takes the five points, but it's Meg Jones who takes the plaudits. Oh, and she's absolutely pumped after it. Meg Jones, rightly so. What a speculative offload over the top. Sees the space, puts the boot on the ball. This is quality. Plenty of space in behind. This defence has been on it all day. Their line speed from the French. What they think is going to help them. Gets it, collects. Isa makes the tackle. But then, how about that? Over the shoulder. She's psyched. And the extras duly added. And now, well, it looks like GB women are going to finish with a flourish. Yesterday, of course, it was 26-12 to the French. The opening day, 26-24. Today, it's been all about those GB women as they finish their audition for the weekend with a very impressive performance. Siofani backs it back to Neeson. Comes
comes round to take the return pass but there's really nowhere to go and the energy and enthusiasm that GB have put into their defensive tasks have been very evident and there is due reward and that's got to be the game plan the balance of speed, power, wherewithal and now chance to finish perfectly well for this tournament and you're in sets it back gets a penalty again not rolling away Brown and Jones part of the social committee of this group trying to find the finish that they were after Lydia Thompson haven't seen an awful lot of her this weekend good to see her on the park Jones and Brown and Raleigh Yuren hangs outside threatening just manages to keep the ball alive Sarah Cox right on top of it but this time the holding on penalty goes against the hosts here to play might as well tap it Colin Eason just checking that everybody's on the same page from the playbook is art looking for that cut but has to go wide to Jacque Jouet Jouet from Le Bleu see a funny comes on that short line the ball goes forward and it's offside the offside call was there from referee Wood another chance for France to finish with something else on the board is art up to Chloe Pell notice on the French website Chloe has got a different surname so I don't know whether she's got married through the, uh, the pandemic the lockdown I'll have to ask her later on the rugby world knows her as Chloe Pell so we shall keep calling that until she tells us otherwise Jacque Jacque just holding on too long and the urgency just beginning to disappear out of the French Ute outfit. Roland says, that's enough, we'll take this scoreline. That was good enough for us. 33-7. A good finish from the GB women. France, nonetheless, have finished top of the log. And some impressive rugby, particularly in this women's tournament. Rob? Yeah, really impressive standard, is it? Always is, Wardy. I think these women are on a fantastic journey in their programme and opportunity they've got certainly with the National Lottery funding I know they're relishing every chance they're getting to play the French could have to improve from that last performance but across the board absolutely right that they took the title massive massive month for them think about the qualification process and them going to Monaco essentially a home tournament for them really really big thing at stake with that golden ticket to Tokyo yeah David Cortex will want to make sure that the confidence gained from this weekend can be utilised in Monaco next month surely, surely they are going to get the ticket France, maybe Russia would be second favourites, certainly on what we've seen through the course of various World Series, you would think that would be the outcome Great Britain, well they've got to decide on selection, which Scott Forrest will decide, he tells us by the middle of June there's the scores that we've had through the course of this weekend. So, great satisfaction all round of finally getting sevens back on the park. Good to see the, the players have loved being out there once again and have produced some very good performances, some very entertaining rugby. Thanks to Rob Vickerman for his company through this weekend. I don't know what I would have done without you. And on behalf of me, Simon Ward, thanks for your company wherever you are in the world. And it's onwards to Tokyo. <laughs>